Philippa Evans, and this is me managing your emotions. <laughs> I'm trying to move away from my oversized jumpers all the time. I was just admiring your bod. It just looked real Thank hot today. Thank you. It was oh. really good. And this your hair's a... down, and it's like, are you, are you coming I, to me? I did it all for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like today I was leaving the house and I was so tired. I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna wear. And I was like, just go really slobby. What are you trying to impress Philippa? <laughs> yes, I am trying to impress you. <laughs> this podcast can't work if we're not perving at each other over the microphone. We need to be physically attracted to each other, otherwise, what's the point of talking to another human being? It's called chemistry, Alex. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> Alex, <laughs> come on. <laughs> yeah, I'm wearing leggings and a baggy shirt. <laughs> This is the describing part where we talk about things that you can't see, because that's how <laughs> good podcasting happens. I guess we do have to talk about historical things. Historically adjacent things as well. This is Everything's Awful Forever. There we go, we introduced it. Oh my god, we're so professional. <laughs> <laughs> kind of... Do you think people listen to this and they're like, they're kind of downers? I, but I feel like every single episode we're like, oh, I'm so tired today. Oh, I'm kind <laughs> of a bit down today. I feel like it's just within us. And we're just kind of like goths in our souls. It's hard out there for a bitch. But this is a motivational podcast because every week we're like, I can't do this. And then we do. And then we but do. But you just fucking do. Yeah. Yeah. The world is dying and you you just told me something very harrowing about that all the insects are dying or something. And it's like, no, 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 la, la, la. Listen to this, though. <laughs> and we're going to have- People mummies. Lean about, yeah, mummies and this. But this one is, it's, it's going to be good because it's coming up to Halloween. <laughs> so we're going to do a spooky one. All Saints Day month! <laughs> and I am Jessica Byrne. I'm Philip Evans. And this is Everything is Awful Forever. What are you talking about? You said this was going to be a spoopy episode, it but you is. haven't told me the topic. No, I have not, because I want it to be a surprise. Is it goblins? It might be goblins. Trolls? Yes. No, it's Serial not. Serial killer? Maybe. Mm, ghosts. A goblin, ghost, serial killer, who is a troll? <sighs> Is it ghosts? It Yes, okay, it's ghosts. It's ghosts. <laughs> ghosts. 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 But it is a true story. <gasps> so spooky time. Spook me. Spook, 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 spook. So have you ever put something down and been so sure that it was in that place? You're like, okay, I've put this down. But then you've gone to look for it and it just isn't there. Where well, you've got like a place to put your thing. Mm -hmm, like, a this, special place. This is the place that I put my phone or something yes. like that and then you go there and it's not there mm -hmm. and you're like this is the oh this is the place that i put it though and it isn't there so clearly it's ghosts you ghosts, are describing my life yeah ghosts is the only explanation for this there is no other explanation at all you're a rational organized person you know where you put your shits yeah exactly but then it's gone and then when you're looking for it you keep returning to that spot because you're like <laughs> Maybe i just didn't see it no it's no it isn't there that's the place and it's not there so Let me look at this wide open space just one more time it, just, it, might, it might be underneath something underneath nothing that's there but it might have been folded into something somehow are my eyes working let me just blink a couple of times it's gonna go away search over there and then come back to the phone <laughs> spot and no it's still not there what the fuck put it back demons <laughs> come on so yeah there's an awful specter clearly that's living among you and moving your shit that's the only explanation it's not that you just <laughs> forgot that you put it down on top of something weird the science checks out yeah absolutely so let me paint you a picture of a g -g 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 ghost <laughs> I'm terrified for a variety of reasons. <laughs> That's right. So in 1941 in Denver, which is in Colorado, which is in the middle of the USA, I have to clarify this because all Americans go, yeah, I'm from fucking West Chester Schnimm, like the rest of the world knows where that is. And I was like, yeah, we know it's in America, but like, where? <laughs> yes, I just no. want to know, does it have good autumns? That's all I care about. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't even kind of really know what the middle of America weather is like. Is, is it, It's either mountains or it's either completely flat. <laughs> I don't know which <laughs> one is which. <laughs> it's either... Beautiful autumn foliage, yeah. big mountains, or dust balls. Desert. Yeah. Desert like, and racist. Okay, desert racist. I think this might be desert racist, but I, uh, I have no idea. Let us know on Twitter. Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> Is this a desert racist town? <laughs> or a mountain racist town? How much do you love Trump? <laughs> 
That's how we gauge. Is your state surrounded by a wall? (laughs) Okay, so, yes, the middle of the USA. So, 73-year-old Philip Peters lives with his wife in a bungalow where they've lived together since 1899. And he was a retired railroad auditor. Don't this sounds like desert mountain place. Probably. That, well, you only get trains where there's desert. Yeah, I guess it's like Wild West sort of. <laughs> we're just making world. up this world building Listen, scenario. this is half the podcast. We're world building now. We're getting it together. We're going to do America. And everyone's like, yes, that's right. Yes. <laughs> oh, shit. Maybe it's like a time traveling thing where we talk about it and then it becomes that. Oh, oh my God. Shit. That'd be cool. Anyway, so she was a railroad auditor and she was nothing because it was the 40s and who cares by the way can i say that it took me several several articles to find her name oh. she was just mrs peters the whole time <laughs> and i was like no i'm not doing it i'm not having her just like she exists because of him it, her name was helen and i was gonna say brenda s- will not be forgotten <laughs> this day <laughs> glinda peters no her name is helen it took me so long <laughs> to actually find her name but i did do that so i'm calling her helen not mrs peters We'll just call him Mr. Peters. Yeah, he's Mr. Peters. So on the 3rd of October, Helen breaks her hip and she's hospitalized, meaning that he, Mr. Peters, (laughs) is going to be home alone. And men can't do things for themselves because it's 1941. The home is basically the Wild West, but inside? Yeah, well, only the woman can wrangle together meals and shit. I mean, he also was 73, so, you know... (laughs) He, it's hard to do things when you're old. You're a little more vulnerable. Yeah, exactly. So his one of his neighbours offers to help him and cook meals for him. He was, yeah, he was 73, he was worried about his wife, and so it's like this kind neighbour comes, cooks meals for him every day, which is very lovely. Yeah, your old neighbour, you know, is having a, a hard time. Is she, the neighbour, going to be the ghost, where he's like, who's making this mac and cheese? <laughs> <laughs> where did it come from? <laughs> he wakes up and well, I don't know what Americans eat fucking deep fried hot dogs stuffed inside a pizza and he's that like sounds like Scotland where did they yeah, actually it doesn't it sounds really delicious and I would eat the fuck out of that <laughs> who's cleaning my house oh why is everything why are all my socks folded can I have that ghost <laughs> <laughs> two weeks later on the 17th he doesn't show up for dinner He's the ghost! Oh my god, they're both Ooh. ghosts, everyone's ghosts! Neighbor's like, who have I been cooking for? <laughs> Who's been eating the deep fried pizza hot dog also stuffed inside a turkey? <laughs> Plot twist, they were all ghosts. Shit, we're ghosts. This podcast isn't real, it's just a figment of your ear holes. <laughs> he doesn't show up for dinner two weeks mm-hmm. later. Very worrying. She starts to get very worried and heads over to the house to see if he's okay. Like maybe he's had a fall or something like that. So tries the door but it doesn't budge and um, knocks but no one answers so this is very worrying he's an old man living by himself so she gathers some of the other neighbours to see if they can help see if they can try and get into the house every door and window was locked but there's a little girl that manages to like jimmy open the loose screen Mm -hmm. and they break into the house by like jimmying open the door and she slips into the house through the window and then everyone hears her scream (gasps) Philip, Mr. Peters, husband of Helen, (laughs) husband of Helen, was found dead in his living room. He was half-dressed, barefoot, and beaten to a bloody pulp. Some of the injuries looked like they had been done after he was dead, and he had more than a dozen head wounds on his skull. Police arrived on the scene, and they ruled out robbery, as his watch and money were all left alone. And also more puzzling is that the front door was both locked and bolted with a chain, meaning that no possible egress could have been made that way. And also every single window and door in the house was locked, and so there was no way that a killer could have gotten out. I'm getting the spooks. He simply vanished into thin air. What are you thinking right now? Hmm... I'm going to take a beer break while you're thinking. I'm going to sip my alcohol. No, you have to talk while I'm beering. That's how it works. We can't just both have a beer break. <laughs> Stop it! I'm so jealous <laughs> currently. Watch me drink. I want some beer. Where was he sitting? Could he have done it to himself? He was beaten to death with a... Uh, well, that's one of those things where, you know, you've got like an iron rod to like poke a fire. A poker. Yeah, it's a poker. <laughs> If you poke the fire, you poker. The scientific word is pocus, pocus. (laughs) 
I mean, could he have been beaten to death from, like, outside and managed to get home? No, there was no, like, traces of blood or, like, spatter or anything mm. that was like that. It was clear that he was just in his living room and then he was beaten there where he was. Was Helen maybe mad that another woman ha- had Helen died in the hospital? <gasps> Did she come back as a girl? And brain him for eating another woman's mac and cheese. How? That's basically the 40s version of cheating. That's adultery. <laughs> of course, what they all think is the killer still in the house. I would have died. Yes. <laughs> I'd be like, where's the ghost? Oh, and meanwhile... God. And everyone's like, okay, you, you look for the ghosts. We'll look for the human that's still possibly here <laughs> in the fucking corporeal world. <laughs> There's like a suspicious lumpy shape behind the curtain and I'm like, where's the ghost? ghost? And you're like looking at a speck like, look, it's an orb. They've released an orb. And it's a floating dust piece. And meanwhile, the curtain's blowing. <laughs> and there's someone who's like, you. <laughs> and you're like, the ghost is out of Did you see that the ghost said, Get out? <laughs> <laughs> oh, ghost hunters. I would not live long in this world. No. In the real world. <laughs> in the current world that we inhabit. Why do you think I stay inside? <laughs> so, yeah, they all think that the killer must still be in the house because there's no oh. possible mode of exit so they scour the entire house this is everybody there in the police and there is nothing uh, except nothing <laughs> the what birth did that... of a ghost did you hear that the ghost said i know what you did oh my god but there's no attic and the, there's no attic or loft and there's no basement all the cupboards are checked there's absolutely nothing So, in January 1942, three months later, a group of children were playing nearby in the old Peter's bungalow. It was Mm -hmm. bitterly cold, and they had had been below zero for several days. But when they were passing the house, a light was on. (gasps) They know it's empty, as Helen Peters hadn't returned from the hospital yet. And then they look up at the window, because they're like, oh my god, there's a light, you know, we've got to go and see what's going on in the old Peter's bungalow. Have those kids window. not watched horror movies? No, because it's the 40s and it doesn't exist. They don't have TV for the first. No. They look up at the window and they see a thin, gaunt, ghostly face in shadows in the window and they all run. The police, they call the police as well because, you know, there's ghosts, so you call the police. <laughs> Who are you going to call? The local law enforcement. <laughs> The police search the entire house again, and once again, they turn up nothing. Not a trace of anyone or anything. The house is empty. So despite it being haunted and where her husband died, Helen Peters returns home because she'd lived there for 50 years, that she'd made her life there. And also, this is a horror film where you, for some reason, no one leaves the haunted place. (laughs) They just continually stay there forever. In fact, she put her bed in the attic that doesn't exist. (laughs) Just to be closer. (laughs) And slept in the pool of blood that was still in the carpet from (laughs) her husband, Mr. Peters. She didn't throw that old sofa away. (laughs) It's all I have left of old Phil. So she possibly, you know, she lived there for 50 years. She, you know, I don't know why. To, like, make some kind of, like, up situation where she ties a bunch of trains to the house to go to the <laughs> railroad where he used to work. I don't know. So one night she hears a sudden noise in the house and she spooks and she falls again. And this causes her to fracture her thigh. Oh. All brittle bones, Helen. All people break so easily. I know, flimsy old lady. It's so sad. So Mrs. Flimsy Peters <laughs> had a nurse come and live with her because she didn't want to go back to the hospital. She had a live-in nurse. The nurse, though, kept hearing rattling noises all throughout the house. And she reported it to the police, but, you know, nothing happened. But if paranormal activity in every horror film ever is anything to go by, once you call the police, this speeds everything up and angers (laughs) the entity. So one night the nurse hears a noise in the middle of the night. She gets up and creeps across the dark corridor of the house to try and seek out what the noise is. Would you do that? Absolutely fucking not. Let me tell you in fact, like, I'm gonna have to come back and set the scene again because I'm ruining it with my, like, tangent. But when, um, in uni, on my fourth year when I was doing my postgraduate degree, me and a friend moved into a house that they said would be finished by the time we moved in. (laughs) It wasn't. We only had, like, one extension cord from the next door that only had two plugs in, so we had to choose whether or not we had the light 
or the microwave plugged in <laughs> because the other one was for the fridge and we couldn't turn mm-hmm. that off. So we basically didn't have an oven or anything like that. The only thing that worked was hot water. So like you could flush the toilets, but we didn't have a shower or anything like that. I had to go next door for a shower. <laughs> and there was just like electrical wires and shit. Like honestly, I can't mm. describe to you how unfinished this fucking house was. It basically had a ceiling and like nothing else. The door didn't lock as well. There was like an outside door, but it was a flat and no one else lived in like the other building. There was only like two habited rooms no there was only right so there was like three rooms ours was the only one that was habited because they were still sort of renovating Ooh. it and so <laughs> one day we we opened the door and we heard all these noises and it was in the middle of the night and so me and my friend we were like fucking terrified because it's a basically a building site so people were in and out all day we were like yeah, someone like snuck in and just like hidden in one of like, like the building site gutted rooms and so we were fucking terrified there was no lights of course because we only had (laughs) one lamp so i we got like our phone light and crept out and like searched to see the house i remember like breathing so hard like opening cupboards and being like oh my god oh my god oh my god Ah, ah." just to see if there was someone in there was so fucking scary oh my god so yes i have done that the solution is to hide under the covers yeah (laughs) ghosts won't fuck you if you're covered we do yeah we each went to each other's bedrooms like look in the cupboards as well to see if there was anyone in there (laughs) because it was that scary anyway so yeah, the nurse creeping across the corridor in the middle of the night to see what the house is. She needs to protect her old lady, who is incredibly flimsy and brittle. So she heads across the dark corridors of the house and sees something stooping on the back step of the house. She can't quite make out what it is, so she creeps up towards it. It's no! like a thin, shadowy thing. And as she gets close to it, it turns and chatters its teeth at her. Oh, no! <laughs> I know, yeah, just like a <laughs> of teeth. <laughs> so she dead your ghost. <laughs> so she quit immediately. Of course, this is the most haunted thing in the fucking universe. Several days later, Helen is home alone, and she hears another mysterious noise. Finally, she catches something in the act, turns on the light, and what she sees. The fucking ghost. It's a filthy, rotting-looking waif that vanished when she screamed. So she catches it, sees this thing, she screams because of course she does. It's like a skeletal sort of disgusting, filthy spectre. And that was it. She went to live with her son after that, abandoning the house because yes, get the fuck out of the haunted place. <laughs> I would feel no shame just setting the house on fire. <laughs> yeah, you set a small fire as you leave and <laughs> that's, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. It's very uncanny, the chattering of the teeth. That that's the worst thing, isn't it? Ugh. It's so fucking scary. Anyway, she leaves. This is super, super haunted. There's something strange going on in the neighborhood. Who are you going to call the local law enforcement? <laughs> I was hoping it would not be, but... Yeah, I mean, it is. There's no ghost hunters here. They call the the fuzz. So the family of Helen urged the police to keep watch over the house because something weird is going on and they don't know what. So they're like, please look because, you know, we don't really want our mom to be living with us forever. <laughs> so they want to put them back in the house. <laughs> Go away. I Safe love you. Safe now, mom. They mm-hmm. exercise the ghost. It's fine. It's all good. So in July, the police were stationed opposite the house and it's like some kind of excellent 40s stakeout. <laughs> can you imagine? <laughs> They've got, like, fucking cool hats on and they're all smoking cigars. And it's like a noir kind of... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my god, I fucking love so that. So there was the steam. <laughs> I think she had legs all the way up to the top, you know what I mean. There was not anything. There was not... <laughs> Edit that out, oh my god. <laughs> she had legs all the way up to where her legs would be, if you know what I mean. <laughs> she had legs where legs are normally situated, and I found that quite arousing. It's not even a 40s accent. <laughs> That's more like, come up and see me sometime, man. I channeled Mae West, and I don't apologize. When the police caught a face in the window, <gasps> one of them, it wasn't Helen, but it was a horrific, gaunt, shadowy face. So the cop nudges the other one next to him, and the second cop looks over, curtains close. The first run, barreling down the door to go and catch this ghost, because I would not do that. <laughs> I would be running, but in the very opposite direction. 
I've watched The Garage. I know what happens to the police yes. when they're on a case. God, I love that film. <laughs> that film haunted me for so long. You're just watching Sarah Michelle Gellar go and kill them, Buffy. Yeah. Fuck it. No. Buffy, come on. You're good at this shit. You know what to do here. So when they break down the door, they're hit with a strange, sour smell of animal in a house that's supposedly empty. Also, there's old magazines littering the table and a weird photograph from the 1890s of a scraggly youth holding a mandolin. <laughs> the uncanny detail. It's the mandolin ghost of the 40s. <laughs> <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Uh, yeah, so that's not any other Peters or anyone that they recognise. The two forties cops, or I wrote here that I wanted them to be like both of them smoking cigars <laughs> because of course. <laughs> is it going to be like a buddy cop situation where one of them is cracking wise and the yeah. other one's the straight man? Yeah, the other one's like old and gruff, and maybe he's like going <laughs> to retire soon. Yeah, <laughs> there's this unsolved case, <laughs> and there's this green like new guy who's all like peppy and like sprightly, and he's like. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So they begin to search the house. One of them creeps into a room and sees a wardrobe shut. <gasps> and I would scream. And so I guess in this situation, this is like the sprightly, peppy young one. <laughs> he runs up to the wardrobe and uh, he opens it and it's empty. There's nothing in there. Is it fucking Narnia? Who knows? But then... And the graph cop is downstairs sitting at the kitchen looking at the photographs going I oh, fucking knew it. Oh my god. It's that ghost from the 20s. It's the mandolin man that <laughs> killed my mom. <laughs> Faced this evil before. <laughs> I know exactly what to do and he gets a, a sachet of salt out of his pocket <laughs> that he's always carried with him and everyone at the force makes fun of him carrying around that little salt packet but he knows. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> so anyway, he's in the cupboard. This is scary, Philippa. Stop giggling. <laughs> I'm giggling in fear. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, the empty cupboard. Okay, there's a cupboard right behind me, and I don't know if it's open. <laughs> so yeah, he goes into the cupboard. It's empty, but then he looks up, <laughs> and inside the wardrobe is a trap door that leads to a secret loft. No! And inside, there's a pair of the f- most fucking disgusting dirtiest like zombie feet he's ever seen in his whole Did life nobody know about the demon loft nails and like dirt and shit <sighs> and like the worst and shitty like raggedy trousers as well so the cop like grabs for him like, Why? Get, gets a hold of the trousers because close the closet because leave. he's actually just a deputy and this is his first case and afterwards he'll get made a cop I think that's how it works this is Brad Pitt and later on he's gonna get his <laughs> wife's head in a box so he jumps up and he grabs for the trousers but they're so like ragged that they just rip off and they're like the feet are kicking and wriggling so he jumps up and reaches for the foot and grabs it and starts to pull and so like the feet are kicking and kicking and kicking and he's pulling and basically wrestles this thing out of the loft and out falls the skinniest filthiest most emaciated man they've ever seen once they've wrestled him out of this like secret compartment in the wardrobe the man is like unconscious immediately. Did Helen not know about the secret compartment in the wardrobe? Having lived there for 50, how many years? 50 years? No! No, they didn't! Because it's a secret fucking compartment in the loft! How did the skinny man know about it? I don't know! (laughs) He hid in the wardrobe and was like, I need to go somewhere. Like, oh, oh, wait, (laughs) thank you, Jesus! And then just like scrabbled up into it. So, yeah, he was like disgustingly, skeletally thin. His hair was long, matted tatters like (sighs) Samara from The Ring. And the force of wrestling had rendered him unconscious. So the police called the ambulance as this waif was barely alive. So the real ghost was poverty. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. We solved it. So had this man been here the whole time, living oh. unseen in the attic space, for months and months he'd been there, just living in the attic. Was he the mandolin man? He was the mandolin man. See, Peters had met him years and years earlier because he'd gone to try and make his fortune in New York, become a salesman or something, and this is where he met this like homeless, scraggly mandolin man youth that he'd never told his wife about because <laughs> he kind of failed at being a salesman, which is why he had to mm-hmm. return to college. Colorado. Because I don't think anyone lives in Colorado. I think everyone just like sullenly returns there, you know? Colorado is like mountains and bears. I, <laughs> I, I literally know. know nothing. And I'm sorry if Colorado is actually like a, a thriving metropolis. Place. Yeah, I know. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, so the uh, uh, the man had been there the whole time. So the hall in the in the wardrobe was it it wasn't like a loft space hall. It was just like a tiny tiny trap door that says here it's three times the size of a cigar box lid. What? Like they're <laughs> supposed to know how big that is. It has a cigar box lid. I think it's like this size though. We've got a very small like Amazon box in front of us. <laughs> what it is is incredibly small, just like really really tight, so tight that you wouldn't think a human person would be able to fit in there, which is why I think nobody thought of it. Cuz I guess like she she maybe knew that she had this like tiny space above her cupboard, mm. but she was like a human person couldn't fit in there. But how would something like if you could fit into the tiny box space? Mm. How would you beat a person to death? Well, the thing is like he crawled out i'll get to it okay you're gonna get to it <laughs> so yeah the the hole to get up into the attic space tiny but one of a few of the cops tried to get themselves through and it just wasn't big enough like none of them could do it i assuming they're getting like the skinniest guy not, you know like <laughs> big joe or something <laughs> i just don't fit guys y- yeah, uh, mm. I think we need skinny Jim. <laughs> yeah, we need. No, guys, I can do it. Shut up! I'm doing it. Oh, I'm <laughs> oh no, we're gonna have to grease his head like a pig and poo. <laughs> stop eating the the grease, Big Joe. I mean, we're trying to lose. <laughs> stop it! Stop shaming me. So one of the policemen poked the head to look into the attic room, and it was only a few sizes larger than a coffin. The whole space. So it's really small. Oh, you can just see him there waiting at night. I know. Gr- for months and months. His teeth chattering. chattering. <laughs> yeah, and there was a small incandescent bulb hanging from a wire in the rafters, and it had an overpowering animal stench. Because I guess, he, I guess he's been like peeing and like and uh. shitting up there as well. And they, they could make out that they had like a small bed made of an old ironing board. <laughs> he was just like laying on this ironing board, and there were tattered magazines everywhere, and the place was absolutely blanketed in spider webs. To keep him warm at To night. keep him fucking warm. I don't know if he, like, knitted one together into a blanket or something. <laughs> so the man was Theodore Edward Conies, and he confessed once he was given food and taken to the police station. And this is him, a quote. Oh, should I do an American Colorado <laughs> accent? Whatever this that is. accent we don't know? This yes! Accent, I'm, I'm just going to, like, everything was I don't know what they sound I'm like Russian there. I'm Russian Colorado! <laughs> <laughs> so everything would have been all right. Phil Peters would be alive today if he hadn't caught me robbing the ice box. Everything would have been all right if it weren't for those meddling kids. Meddling kid. So everything would have been all right. Phil Peters would be alive today if he hadn't caught me robbing the ice box the See, ice box yeah i guess the the fridge the fridge yeah the yes. fridge as we know i think in the 40s like fridges were only just kind of like coming into America. fair enough so it was him or me i thought he had gone out but he was taking a nap so i hit him with the stove shaker when he tried to run for help so i guess this means that he was like sneaking in and out like getting food and just mm-hmm. kind of like going back in anyway i'm gonna so did he just follow him home I'll get there. So, I don't know if you recognize me. It was nearly 30 years since he'd last seen me. (gasps) When it was over, I ran to the attic after I'd washed and dried the shaker. Because when the police found it, they found, like, two stove shakers or pokers. Uh, Like, one was covered in dust, and the other one was kind of, like, clean and dry, so they knew that that was the weapon. Anyway, I was in the neighborhood in September in 1941, and I found the house was unlocked and no one home. So I went in and stole some food. I was in bad shape, my lungs were giving me a lot of trouble, and I was at the end of my rope. Fall was coming, and I couldn't face another winter on the road. I had to have a place to stay. I didn't know Mrs. Peters was in the hospital. I found the hole in the hole in the closet, climbed through and slept and slept. Whenever I heard him downstairs, I kept real still. I then got bolder and used to shadow him from room to room. <laughs> There's just someone sneaking around while you're in the so house. You have no creepy. fucking idea. Also, he found like a hole in the closet, and he was like, "That's a nice place. I'm gonna stay, I'm gonna stay here." <laughs> it was a sort of game. It gave me a thrill. <laughs> It was the first time in my life I'd ever had anyone at my mercy. But I didn't want to hurt him. It was miserably hot in the summer and my feet froze in the dead of winter in the attic. But it was all part of the price I was willing to pay. I can't tell you why I stuck it out. I guess it was mostly because it was a world of my own. I used to go down and look out the windows and watch the postman come by. Nobody's written to me in 25 years. 
Whenever I saw people on the street, I hated them and would go well, back to my attic. Why would anyone write to him? You in a, <laughs> in a house. house. Oh, I no. know. Oh, I'm going to go down to the post. Is there anything for me, Philip? Nope. Ghost, nothing for you. Addressed to the cupboard under the stairs. You're a wizard. Oh my god, you're a wizard, Harry. What? You're a wizard, Theo. So, yeah, basically he was very mentally unwell because he <laughs> yeah. wanted to live in a coffin hole in an attic and sneak around and follow someone unwittingly in their own house. And feel real mad that no one was writing to him. Yeah. And so no he- Christmas card for me. <laughs> So, yeah, he snuck down because he thought he was out, he was going to eat, and then Philip caught him, and so he beat him to death. Beat, beat, beat him to death. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you get. That's what you get, (laughs) Phil. I just wanted that ice lolly. Fuck. (laughs) I'm now going to suspect that Mm -hmm. somebody is shadowing me down every dark corridor (laughs) hiding in the closet. We've got a really big loft and so I'm scared that sometimes I am just genuinely scared I'll just get the fear in me that someone's living there every so often. <laughs> I've got these drawers under my bed that yeah. a person could technically fit into I'm gonna be yeah. <sighs> yeah it's spooky isn't it? So it I is. like that it wasn't ghosts in the end but it, somehow it's worse <laughs> This is very let's not meet. <laughs> yeah so yeah because of him skulking around in his tiny skinny disgusting body he was known as the spider man of denver <laughs> toby mcguire's the first spider man that's an inside joke i might share that on twitter i was very drunk <laughs> and there you go that's the spider man of denver i'm thoroughly spooked it's horrible isn't it i just because you always get that irrational thought because like I, I have a house that's kind of in the woods. Sometimes if I'm home alone and I hear spooky noises, I'm just like, this is how I die. This is someone in my house. Oh my God. So I have a spooky story, mm-hmm. which is that, which is that when I was a little girl, I used to be scared to look out the window because I used to think that I saw people in the garden mm-hmm. walking around. And I was always scared that a face would, like, press up against the glass, going, blah, 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 um, as faces do. Yes. And I mentioned this fear to my parents later on, going, like, I used to always see these people walking around alone. And apparently, people used to break into our house. Well, not our house, but our garden, yeah. and sleep there. Why? So I really was seeing people <gasps> sleeping on the lawn. <laughs> Worse, South again. Africa's weird, y'all. Oh my god, why did they sleep in your garden? I don't know. Is it a nice garden? Was it like protected? Like it had fences, so like lions weren't like because it had a gazebo. Oh my god! <laughs> wow. Ah, uh, the 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 people were real. The shadow people. Shit. So how do you feel about Halloween? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is Halloween. This is Halloween. <laughs> That was a scary story, Spider-Man of Denver. I think it's worse that it wasn't a ghost. That's what I thought, that it was just this disgusting, filthy man (laughs) sleeping on an iron board in his own shit up in the loft. Is there a real person under your bed? Mm. In your closet? Behind the door? Mm. Well, then, that was that. So I guess some things are nice sometimes. I could do something. Yeah. <laughs> something so nice. My house has only two people in it right now. Uh huh. I've got a nice thing. A nice thing. A nice thing. Nice, 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 nice. Nice. I have a friend who's in a band. Yay. And it's. I went to go see them playing live for their album launch. And it was really, really good. What band is it? They're called Storm the Palace. Cool. It's a good. And they sing songs about delicious monsters, which is the name of the new album. And Great. also a vaguely erotic song about seagulls, which I really recommend. <laughs> I fell horny in ways I've never felt before. Mm. So Storm the Palace. And you can actually listen to all their stuff on Bandcamp. Very so nice. We should like link to that when this episode goes We should. Live. Yeah. I'm a shout it out because it was very, very good. I've never heard them play live before, and mm. I now feel this uncomfortable sense of hero worship towards my friend. Great. It's it's kind of weird now. That Friendship's she... ruined, I'm sorry. There's an accordion in it. Oh a my god. Acc- and yay. Bagpipes as well. I know you think bagpipes, mm. but bagpipes. Well, it's amazing. I really like Dropkick Murphys. They often deploy bagpipes. Okay. 
The oh, bagpipes are occasional. It. Yeah. I recommend it. And at the um at the album launch we all got a tiny spider plant. Oh. So there were plants as well. Oh my god, this is basically like geared to you. I think she's trying to woo you. <laughs> I find it hard to leave the house, so if you lure me with the promise of plants. Yes. It's a good way to get me out. Yes. When we went outside the venue, there was a f- there'd been a fire alarm, so everyone was standing outside, and mm. that made it even more exciting because fire, fire, <laughs> fire and plants! Oh my god! So that was my some things are nice sometimes. That's I'll good. link to the band because they are very good. Mm. Oh shit! I didn't think of any as usual. I guess I started doing Couch to Five K. Oh yeah, you mentioned, and it's quite fun because I like I, I sometimes go jogging, but yeah, I don't. I you kind of like don't really do it right. Was it me? Did I inspire you? Oh, yeah, because you said you were doing it, and I was like, you know, I should do it. I should get it out. Maybe one day we'll pass each other on a road oh. as we both jog, and we'll give each other the runner's look. <laughs> yeah, like, we're fit and not, we're improving our lives. <laughs> no, actually, it's like, yeah, I'm dying and I'm vomiting as I run. <laughs> I did my first 25-minute run, and... <gasps> Halfway through, I was like, I'm a vomit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really going to throw up on these people. I've heard when people uh, do it, it like it weans you in really, really easy mm. and then suddenly really ramps it up jumps. and you're like, fuck. It's like, you've been running for six minutes. Well done. Mm. Now 20. Oh, God. So, yeah, running and it feels it, it's feel good. Also, because there's a new walk as well that I'm going down. It's by the river and it's beautiful. I actually took a picture of one of the things and put it on Instagram because it's lovely and it's um, autumn at the moment. Oh, mm. fall. fall. So Everyone's like, autumn. Autumn. America's like, but the leaves. But they fall. fall. <laughs> they fall. They fall. The, the trees die. It's fall. No, You it's know okay. what, America? It sounds like we mark you a lot. <laughs> and we do. <laughs> Well, uh, we'll stop mocking you once you hire a woman to be the president, or at <laughs> least please someone assassinate the Cheeto. You heard it here first. I'm going to do it in a plan. Just move into the space above his closet. <laughs> yeah, sneak around in the, in the, in the White House. Sneak you know about where it is. Yeah, you know it's a very famous address, so just go in there, sneak around. <laughs> And steal his lollies from his fridge. Shadow him for a while. And and that's how the president dies. Trump's walking down the corridor at night to go and take a pee. And he's like, someone behind me? (laughs) And it turns out he's like, I don't know, how many people listen to this podcast? Like three? (laughs) All three of us, let's go. (laughs) You get automatic access to the Mildred Patreon. Yes, and the rewards are mwah, chef kiss. Mwah, great. Is it legal to suggest? That? No, I mean, no, but that's okay because only three people listen. So you know who We're you are. Fine. Go do it, go do it. So yeah, jogging, good. The walk is good. I took a picture of it. It's nice. Autumn is pretty. My dog is cute. Autumn, autumn, autumn. Autumn, autumn's nice, mate. <laughs> and yeah, that's that. And health. I know for a fact that there's a special app that lets you do the Catch to 5K, but with zombies. Zombies Run. I also yes. have that downloaded, but I'm doing Couch to 5K first. So there is Zombies Run, mm. which is a great app. Yeah. But they also have a Couch to 5K trainer. Oh. Where you kind of prepare for the zombie apocalypse by learning to run five kilometers. Wonderful. I am already quite far along the Couch to 5K, but I'm thinking of swapping over just because. Because zombies. Halloween! Halloween! <laughs> that's right, that's right. Have we talked about a zombie apocalypse plan on the podcast, or have we just done it personally? I think that we've referred to it. Yeah. Who you would save because they're squishy and you need to save them. Who you would leave behind because you love them dearly, but they're not going to survive. <laughs> Mercy kill. And then who, how would you survive? You need Prepare to just for it. run a little bit. You know what? Actually, we don't want to encourage people because you don't need to be the fastest. You just need to not be the slowest. Hell yeah. So I never thought about that. So who would you save? Who would you band together with because they're cool and you know they'd survive? And who would be your fodder? I'm doing like a <laughs> like a little like hand over the side of my mouth, like I'm covering it that you can't see. <laughs> I think people need to tell us their zombie contingency plans on Twitter. Yes, please do. At awful forever pod. At awful forever pod at Twitter. Tell us so that we can take your ideas and use it on Patreon somehow. <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah, Patreon, please give us money. I'll I've taken a picture of our fucking microphone box rig that I'll put <laughs> up and be like, please give to our Patreon because we need this not to be a fucking cardboard box with a pillowcase with pins sticking out of it. <laughs> we are recording to you live out of Amazon boxes. Amazon, this episode is sponsored by Amazon. <laughs> Jeff Bezos needs more money. Please give Jeff Bezos some money. Well, let's go spoop ourselves over lunch, I guess. <gasps> what was that? Oh my <gasps> god! And everyone was like, oh thank god they're dead. Oh my god. Finally. <laughs>